on it, y'all believe a snitch, would you snitch? You would! Hey, yo, bro, with the locks. Come here, man. I gotta ask you a question. He said he wouldn't snitch. So if somebody was raping your grandmother, you wouldn't want, you wouldn't want somebody to say something. That's just sad, man. That's a shame, man. Look, Karen, I'm gonna show you what color Jesus is. You a smart young man. You out of all your brothers and sisters, you over here because you want to learn. I'm gonna show some. Go to verse 68 right quick. Look at this, read. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. Come on. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Egypt is synonymous with slavery. Read. By the way, where I thy smite unto thee. Come on. Thou shalt see it no more again. Read. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemy. You know what God said? This right here is biblical prophecy. Right here. In the United States of America, God said you will be sold unto your enemies. Mm -hmm. I've seen much evil around here. And God said this is the product of it. You go into slavery and you won't see your homeland anymore again, brother. Guess what? We were brought here on slave ships and where we at? We still here. Right. For the plantations of Virginia. For the plantations of North Carolina, right. South Carolina, right. Mississippi, Bring it Alabama, up. Right. Florida, right. Georgia, right. Texas. Bring it up. We're still here, brother. Right. Nobody has come to redeem us. God said he would put his people into captivity on cargo slave ships. Right. It's prophesied in the Bible. That's right. And we still here. You want to know who you one of these curses? Another reason. Look how we treat each other. Look at little Cam right here. I want, bro, I want you to stand up and show little Cam something. Look here, come here, young brother. I want, I want to, come right here for me. Excuse me, so I want to ask you a question. You, you watch superhero cartoons? What's your favorite superhero name? Spider-Man. I want to show you some. Look at these pictures right here. Now, if I want to ask you, little Cam, who was the good guy, who was the bad guy? Which one of these two who would you say was the bad guy? Between this picture and that picture, who the bad guy? You see the problem? You see the problem? Do y'all see the problem? The image of Christ as a black man is in the Bible. I asked little Cam, little Cam, who is the good guy, who is the bad guy if you had to choose? He pointed to the black man. This is why we kill each other. He's just a child. This is why we kill each other. Because it's been embedded in his mind that this is evil and this is good. Right. But who taught him that? Do y'all ask yourself, young brothers, hold on for a second. Young brothers, I asked this young man, who is the good guy and the bad guy? And he put in somebody that looked like you. And guess what's going to happen tomorrow after the night? Excuse me, son. Guess what's going to happen after the night? Somebody just like us will get killed. What? that always happen. A black person will get gunned down. So look, I want to show you in the Bible, look, Cam. That man right there, that's the true image of Jesus Christ. So when you see yourself in the mirror, that's what you look at. When you close your eyes and pray, that's what you need to see. I saw you talking to your daddy earlier. You know your daddy was over here. And guess what? He recorded all this. So your daddy got a lot more to show you when you get home. Go to Revelation chapter 1, verse 14. I'm going to show you. Listen real good, little Cam, all right? Listen. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 14. His head and his hair were white like wool. Jesus Christ's hair was white like wool. Read. As white as snow. I see a lot of black people out here with beautiful woolly hair. Read. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Uh -huh. And his feet like a divine bride. Look here. You see that sister hair right there? You see that sister? That's that beautiful white woolly hair, just like Christ. This lady right here. Just like that. That white woolly, beautiful hair, just like Christ. He said his feet the color of fine bread. You see her hair? Look, Casey. Hey, look at your hair. Is your hair right here, is it the same color as your feet? You just take the shoes and socks off? It was the same color, right? So guess what it's saying in the Bible? All across Christ's body is the same color. Listen to what color it is, read. And his feet like a divine bread, as if they burned in a furnace. How do you look, Kim? You're nine years old. If I were to take something and burn it, what color would it turn? It would turn black, right. So if it said Christ, why is this color in the burning the furnace? What color is Christ? 
and it said, read it again, listen. You, I said if I give you something, I'll burn it. You said it's going to turn black, right? Now watch this. Read it. I'm going to read it again. Listen real close. And his feet, like a divine bread, as if they burn in a furnace. So it said Christ's feet were like brass, as if they burned in a furnace. So if Christ's feet look like, like they burn, what color is his feet? Yeah, if it, if, yeah, black. So what's the color of the rest of his body? Black. All oh, praise to the most high. You see that? This is what Christ said we need to be like little children. Because Cam understood what came out of the Bible. Simply, we show Cam the true image of Christ in the Bible. Right. So Cam, when you see your brothers and sisters, you tell you don't 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 bring any harm to them. You gotta rebuke them and correct because we're we living in error. But when you see these images, don't look at that image as the bad guy, as the bad guy. Don't look at this image as the good guy. That's the good guy over there. That's the one that's come back to save you if you keep his commandments. Right. You don't know what you don't know what Christ said about little kids? Go to uh, Exodus chapter 20. But honor your father and your mother. This is what Christ told you to do, little kid, because I talked to your father earlier. This is what Christ wants you to do, okay? This is what Jesus wants you to do. That's picture, right? The image. This is what Jesus wants you to do. So you pray at night, I want you to see that face right there. This is what he wants you to do. Exodus chapter 20. Read what you got. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 20 and verse 12. Mm. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the earth. Yeah, you, you hear that little Carol? The Bible says, God said you have to listen to your father and your mother. You understand? Because your father loved you, right? I saw it right over there. You called, you said, Daddy! And you gave your a big old hug, man. And your daddy loved you. So guess what he's going to do? Do you think your daddy loves you? You think he's going to do anything to bring harm to you? He wants you to be safe. So God said you have to listen to your dad and your mom because they're going to keep you into safety. All right? They're going to have you real safe. And your dad was over here learning the gospel as well. So guess what? Lord willing, your daddy repent. He learned more of the truth. He's going to teach you the same thing. He's going to lead you into righteousness. Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 6. Proverbs 22 and 6. See that? You see that? So what, what the thumbs up at? Put the thumbs down at? Yup. That's the talk. They taught you lies. That taught you. That's going to teach you the truth. 22 and 6, what you got? This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 22 and verse 6. Come on. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. So you see that little Cam? If you do what your father and mother tell you to do, like God said, they're going to train you up the way you go, and you live a long, healthy life. Right. When you keep God's commandments, Proverbs 72. It's real simple stuff, little Cam, okay? I want to show you some more things I'm going for, right? Show you some more than Proverbs chapter 7 and verse 2. This is what happens when you keep God's commandments. Same thing for your dad, too. Read what you got. This is the book of Proverbs chapter 7 and verse 2. Keep my commandments and live. So God said, keep his commandments and live. One of his commandments is what? Listen to your father and your mother. So that's one of the, a, a big commandment for you, Kim. Keep. And you will live a long, healthy life right. according to this Bible. You got to ask you something, little Kim. I'm going to ask you something, man. What month is this? What month is this? What, what goes on this month that people like to celebrate a lot? It's November right here. What people celebrate in November? And they eat turkey. And Thanksgiving. You, oh, you look excited when I say that. You like Thanksgiving. You love God? Go to John 14, 15. I'm going to ask you a question, little Kevin. You say you love God, right? All right, watch this. I'm going to show you something, OK? It's gonna be it's gonna be a hard pill. It might be it might be easy for you, but for some people it's a hard pill to swallow. John chapter 14 and verse 15. Bring it out. Watch this. This is the book of John, chapter 14 and verse 15. Bring it out. If ye love me, keep my commandments. You hear that? God said if you love him, keep his commandments. So what do you think God think about Thanksgiving? How do you think God feel about Thanksgiving? I bet if I ask anybody else out here how God feel about Thanksgiving, they would give me another answer. What you think God feel about Thanksgiving? You think it's good? So I'm gonna ask you a question. Ask yourself this question. How many times you had Thanksgiving? Yeah. Right? How many times you had Thanksgiving? Yeah. Right? Yeah. How many times you had Thanksgiving? Yeah. Right? Yeah. How many times you had Thanksgiving? Yeah. Right? Yeah. How many times you had Thanksgiving? Yeah. Right? Yeah. How many times you had Thanksgiving? Yeah. Right? Yeah. How many times you had Thanksgiving? Yeah. Right? Yeah. How many times you had Thanksgiving? Yeah. Right? Yeah. How many times you had Thanksgiving? Yeah. Right? Yeah. How many times you had Thanksgiving? Yeah. Right? Yeah. How many but when, it, when you go home, y'all sit around the table and say what you're thankful for, don't you? Oh, today, Cam, 
you're gonna get you're gonna get the truth of the Bible. Because God said the truth shall make you free. So we're gonna make you free, Cam. We're gonna free your mind from all the lies you've been told. So the truth about Thanksgiving, Cam, God don't like that thing. Did you know that? God don't like that. Because you know what it's about? It's a celebration of the killing of his people. If somebody killed your family, would you be happy about that? Would you have a dinner and celebrate that? No, you wouldn't. That's why God isn't pleased with that thing. God isn't happy with it. God is mad that people are celebrating Thanksgiving for the killing of his children. I would be upset, Cam, if somebody did that to you. And I just met you. I would be upset if somebody killed all these people out here and celebrated. Because guess what? Millions and millions of our brothers and sisters were slain right here on this land. Take it out. And slain. they celebrated till this day. Teach. I don't want to see none of my brothers and sisters killed. And I damn sure don't want to see none of them uh, celebrated when they get killed. I don't want to see that. So I want to show you what God said. Give me Colossians. Hold that. Give me Colossians chapter 2 and verse 8. You're going to hold it, all right? We're going to go back to that. Give me Colossians chapter 2 and verse 8. Because I want to explain it to you. What God said that's not good. Read, give me what you got. This is the book of Colossians, chapter 2 and verse 8. Come on. You know, Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. So God said, Beware that any man does what? Spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. Spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. What is that vain deceit that my people have been taught? We've been taught that Thanksgiving is a beautiful thing and God loves it. Right. That's the lie we've been taught. What you say, look here, God? God don't love you, do it. No, he does not. So what else we do? Keep reading. After the tradition of men. After the tradition of who? Men. White men started Thanksgiving. The people that took us into captivity. The people that slain your brothers and sisters See. on this land. See. The blood and bones of our forefathers and foremothers crying out to the Lord. That's right. Do you know America is one big crime scene? And look, look at Israel. We walk around and we don't give a damn. Somebody right here can die right now and guarantee a sister be right up the street twerking. Guarantee a brother be right down here trying to holler at something. Right now, so I can get killed and gunned down. Everybody will run, but give it five minutes. They'll be right back to what they was doing. Get what you got to jump. Was it more than that? Yes, sir. Yeah, keep, it, keep reading. Beware well, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. After tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. And, and what's not after Christ? Easter is not after Christ. Thanksgiving is not after Christ. Christmas is not after Christ. Halloween is not after Christ. Fraternity's damn show ain't after Christ. Sororities ain't after Christ. This abominable celebration out here ain't after Christ. But you know what is after Christ? Feast of dedication. The Passover. Every new moon. Every Sabbath. Bring it out. That's what's after Christ. John chapter 10 and verse 22. We're going to have five people today. Brother, you're here for bear. This word is not going out for it. Brother, you're here for bear. Somebody got to fulfill that two-thirds. And I damn sure don't want to be in my, me and my brothers are standing up here. Yeah. And I don't want it to be for y'all. But you got to hug it to the word of God. See? Read what you got. This is the book of John. Chapter 10 and verse 22. Come on. And it was at Jerusalem, the feast of dedication. And it was winter. Come on. And Jesus walked in the temple. And Jesus what? Walk in the temple. So guess who celebrated the feast of dedication? Jesus the Christ did. The black Messiah. That's right. The black Messiah. That's right. He kept the feast of dedication. He kept the Passover. He kept the Sabbath. They call him the Lord of the Sabbath. He kept the new moons. He kept these things, such as we should be doing. But we transgress God's laws. Therefore, we suffer from the curses of God. Therefore, we fall slain. That's why we get gunned down in the street. That's why our sisters are the first ones in line at the abortion clinic. You go to any other community, you won't see the abortion clinic. When you come to the black community, you will see the abortion clinic. Bring it out. You will see the Plan B pill. A lot of, give me Mark chapter 7, verse 21. This is the mindset of our people. We got 
got I'm, we got so many murderers walking around. It's ridiculous, man. The only thing we should be slaying is these doctors given by our press. That's right. That's the only thing we should be killing is these doctors. And we're going to tear down all these strongholds today. That's right. That's yeah. what we're going to do. That's said, Lord, our God. Yeah. That's what we're going to do. Because our people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Got it? Give me Mark chapter 7 verse 20. This is what's in the mindset of my brothers and sisters when they're walking out here astray. Sheep without a shepherd. Yes, this is what's in the mindset of our brothers and sisters. Mark chapter 7 verse 21. Read. This is the book of Mark chapter 7 and verse 21. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, huh? adultery, fornication. Much adultery and fornication is going to happen tonight. Much adultery, but God said these are evil things that proceed out of the hearts of men. And women too. A lot of y'all will be trying to set some of these brothers up. Read. Murders. Theft. Covetedness. Yes, murders. Theft. Covetedness. Mr. Steal your girl. Want your woman. I want your man. Much of torture and fornication is going to happen out here today. Read. Wickedness. Deceit. Deceivousness. And evil eye. Much wickedness and evilness and deceitfulness. And evil eye. Read. Blasphemy. Pride, foolishness, much blasphemy and pride and foolishness. I see much foolishness going on today. Read. Right. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. God said all these evil things come from within and defile the man. That's what it said. How you doing, brother? What's your name, man? You been listening? All right, come check us out. So, brother, what we're doing is we're showing our people who they are in the Bible. And we're dealing with our nation and their transgressions. Because, bro, I got to ask you a question. Do you feel safe walking through your neighborhood? You may be, the, I'm just saying, you may be, I'm going to say this, I'm going to say this. Majority of our sisters, do you think majority of our sisters feel protected and safe walking the streets? Why is that? Poverty. So, because probably what else? All that stuff that we just listened in the Bible, Mark 7 and that God said that defiles a man from within. These are the things where our sisters don't feel safe. If brothers want to get mad and they go into the other nation, they don't feel safe with the black man. The black man is killing each other at alarming rates. So how is the black woman going to have somebody protect her and her children if Negroes killing each other on the damn time? Yeah. Sir, how old are you, sir? 53. When you was coming up, did you see much crime? And You saw crime. Was it, what it, was it at an alarming rate that you saw today? No, I'm, I'm talking to this brother right here, he in his fifth. I want to ask him, when he was coming up, yeah, did you see much killing like it is today? What, from what point? Uh, yeah, so you would say the murder rate is worse now, right? You think it's the same? God said it's worse now. But the problem... Whether it's worse or matter, whether it's worse or not, the problem is we shouldn't be doing that. You know a law that we can apply to stop majority of that, all that? Give me Leviticus chapter 5 verse 1. How y'all feel about snitching? Hey, bro, you, you laugh. Hey, look, I got to ask you a question. Everybody today think they hard anyway. Everybody a gangster these days. Ain't no everybody a gangster. Until the white man walk into you and slap you in your face and take your land and you don't do nothing about it. Every brother right here, gangster, when it comes to his own people. So I gotta ask you a question. If you saw somebody get shot and gunned, and you saw who did it, you gonna say something? What about you, bro? If you saw somebody get shot or gunned down a staff or a sister on the side of the building and raped or something like that, would you say something? Young brother, y'all believe y'all believe in snitch? Would you snitch? You wouldn't. Hey, your brother with the locks. Come here, man. I gotta ask you a question. He said he wouldn't snitch. So if somebody was raping your grandmother, you wouldn't want you wouldn't want somebody to say something. That's just sad, man. That's a shame, man. Sister, did you hear that? I asked the young brother would he snitch. He said no. So I said if somebody was raping your grandmother, you wouldn't want nobody to say nothing. That's basically what he's saying. 
that's basically he don't live by this law right here. Read, read, read what you got in the big chapter final one. Sis, listen to this. Read what you got. This is the book of Leviticus, chapter five and verse one. Come on. And if a soul sin and hear the voice of swearing, and is a witness whether he have seen or known of it, if he do not utter it, then he shall bear his iniquity. It's called guilty by association. If you see something happen to somebody in your community and you don't say nothing about it, guess what? You're going to pay that same nigga because guess what's going to happen? I asked the young brother, so you want to snitch? He said no. So if you see something, that's why a lot of our sisters feel afraid because they don't have no protection because that's the code that these young punks live by today. That's right. Now who was that that It was a young brother he walked by. He said he wouldn't tell. He wouldn't snitch. But brothers, y'all see the issue in our community. That's the problem in our community. We yeah. see something, we won't say nothing. We but guess what? God said say you are better than a nickel. What does that look like? One of your people get killed, somebody get killed and you don't say something. Guess what? Next week it could be you. That's Next right. week it could be your son. Next week it could be your sister. Next week it could be your grandmother. Next week it could be your mom. Because you ain't want to say You want to live by the cold. No snitch, no snitch. Why do you think my sisters don't feel safe? Bring it out. Because Negroes don't want to say nothing when stuff happens. That's why. Why do you think brothers cut each other's throat? Because they know ain't nobody going to say nothing. They don't live by this law right here in Leviticus 5.1. Desperation and poverty. Huh? Desperation and poverty. Desperation and Due to our conditions. Yeah. But why, do, why are we under these conditions, brother? White I want to ask you that. White people. You said white people? Yeah. Let me say, I'm, 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 I'm show you who sent those white people to bust you up because you weren't listening. Want me to show you that? Give me Deuteronomy chapter 28. I want to I wanna show you who sent them because guess what? Black folks got to be held accountable, man. Black people got to start holding ourselves accountable and we got to start standing up for each other, man. Black people got to start doing that. When we see our people, we don't, all we see is a nigga. We don't see Christ when we see our people. I asked a young brother, a little baby early. He was about nine, he was nine years old, right? I asked, I said, I said, look, his name was Cameron. I said, look, Cameron, you like cartoons, you like little superheroes? He said, yes. I said, your favorite superhero? He said, Spider-Man. I pointed to these two pictures right here. I said, look, Cameron, if I were to ask you who the bad guy, who the good guy, who was the bad guy, little Cameron? Who do you think he pointed at? He pointed at that image right there. No, he ain't got no horns. That's a that's a crown, that's a that's a crown of thorns is it? But hey, but who put this image in your head? Who told you that was the devil? He did! Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. You see this right here? This is a garment. This is a crown of thorns they put on his head when they crucified him. What's this right here? You know what this is? No, this is a manure. But your enemies told you that I belong to you. Your enemies took your heritage. This is our heritage. Our Savior is a black man. Jesus Christ. Oh, don't put that no more. What was we here, soldier? I will be, I want verse 40. Yeah, yeah, give me that. Read what you got. Listen to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 48. Uh, hold on. Start at verse 47. I want to show you why we're in these conditions and who God sent the kids of the person. So read what you got. Verse 47. Uh, because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart. Because we didn't want to keep the Sabbath. We didn't want to do what God told us to do. We want to dress how we want to dress. We want to eat how we want to eat. We want to have sex with who we want to have sex with. We didn't want to keep our holy day. Read. For the abundance of all things, uh -huh. therefore shall thy serve thine enemy. God said, because you didn't want to listen to him, you have to serve your enemies for what? Right. Which the Lord shall sin against thee. God said, you see this right here? What is this? Oh, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you that. I'm going to show you that. What's this right here? No. What, 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 is, this, what is this called right here? This is slavery. So God said, because you didn't want to follow his rules and listen to him, he's going to send your enemies against you. And you're going to have to serve your enemies. What do you mean? Read. I'm going to show you. Bear with me. I'm going to show you. Read. Therefore shall thy serve thine enemy, which the Lord shall send against thee. And God sent it to us. Read. In hunger. In hunger. We go to McDonald's, Burger King, the grocery store. Who owns that? Not your people. God said, you have to go to your enemies for one other thing. Read. 
And it thirsts! And it thirsts! Who owns the water facility? Yes, because if all people own the water facility, Flint, Michigan will have clean water right now. Mississippi will have clean water right now. Guys, we have to go to your enemies for thirst. Read. And in naked days, and in vote of all days, the closer, who owns Fox? Hey, brother, who owns that Fox shirt that's on your shirt? What's his name again? Hey, hey, Osano, what's the brother's name right there? Hey, bro, bro, who owns that Fox shirt brand? My people. Who owns those everything? All things, all things. All that. God said, y'all gonna get enemy. The clothing, read. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. You see what God said? Hey, you wanted your answer. We show you on the Bible. God said he will put a yoke of iron upon your neck. Until he have destroyed thee. Until we have been destroyed. So do you, hey brother, you know what that looked like? God said he will put a yoke of iron on our neck until we've been destroyed. Look around, look around. Does anybody have a yoke of iron? I'll change. Does anybody have a yoke of iron on their neck like this? Or shackles on their neck? No. Does anybody have shackles or yokes of iron on their neck right now? You know why? Because every black man and woman, we've been richly destroyed. We've discontinued from our heritage. That's what happened. Y'all know you know we're mentally destroyed. We don't even know that we're the children of Israel. The other nations look at us and laugh. They say, <laughs> they say look at us. They don't even know that God's people. Ah, they kill each other. Look at they women. They don't even care how they dress, how they look. Look at they men. Look at they men dress. Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is you. It's nation.